All right, friends, we are here for a live training, and I am going to be talking about overthinking and how overthinking will hold you back always in every aspect, business and in life. So one of the questions that I think we need to talk about before we do anything else is why are you overthinking? Because this, this becomes the root of how you're going to be able to implement strategies to stop overthinking, right? So there are myriad reasons why you overthink. A few of those common causes of overthinking include anxiety and depression, um, a negative mindset from past experiences, maybe traumas from stress and pressure that you're experiencing in your day-to-day -day right now, distractions. We all have distractions and these distractions can cause us to overthink. Um, fear, a lack of knowledge, and even sometimes too much knowledge. Spending too much time researching, too much time consuming without taking action. Avoidance is another one, perfectionism is yet another reason we overthink. So what happens when you overthink? Well, first of all, you don't make decisions. You procrastinate, you stay stuck, you don't grow or advance in whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. You overthink more, it becomes a vicious cycle. You spend more time consuming versus doing. You're consuming because you're overthinking. So you think you need more information. And so again, this just becomes this vicious cycle. You consume more content, you don't take action. You consume more content, you don't take action. Your brain is just overthinking everything that you're consuming. You don't grow as an individual or a business owner. And when you don't grow, you can't reach your goals and success becomes less and less likely. So how can you stop overthinking? Well, you can, number one, eliminate distractions. You can eliminate those things that are influencing you in a negative way or causing you to become confused. You can ask for help to know the next right steps to take in order to reach your decisions. There is no shame in asking for help especially if it's help that you need to be able to advance in your life and business. You can align all of your decisions with your core values. And this is one of my favorite things to talk about because when you align with your core values, you eliminate the overthinking. You eliminate questioning whether or not this is right for you. So if you think about it, if, if one of your core values is, is honesty, but you are considering something, an opportunity or working with a client or something that just doesn't feel right to you, something just feels off and you don't say that, you, you hide those feelings and emotions or you don't speak that, you know, maybe it's someone that there's a reason you don't feel right working with them, but you don't tell them that. That's not being completely honest. And when you're not completely honest and that's your core value, you're going to feel pretty icky. You're going to feel, you know, almost spammy, I guess, but it's going to bring you down. And then you're going to be sitting there in that place of overthinking and indecision and not doing the right action to either say yes to this person to work with them or to say no and to work with someone else instead. And when you think about that, that negative energy then becomes so much a part of your entire experience working with that person because it wasn't aligned with you and your values from the get-go. Another way that you can overcome overthinking is to pray and lean into scripture. One of my favorite verses is 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you if you ask him to. And sometimes, especially if we're overthinking, we may not even know what to ask for. We may not even know what to pray for. But guess what? All things are possible for God. 
And what's so cool is that if you have something on your heart and you're trying to make this decision or you're trying to stop overthinking, all you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to pray for you because he'll know what to pray for you. So it makes it really super easy to just go to him and ask for that help. You will receive the guidance. It may take some time. You may have to pray for a little bit, but guess what? It ultimately, the answer will be there for you. Another way to stop overthinking is to stop scrolling on social media. It's the ultimate comparison trap. And if you are overthinking, chances are you are experiencing doubt and fear. And if you're scrolling on social media looking for answers or just trying to numb your brain, you're going to see things that are going to trigger, trigger more doubt because you're going to compare yourself to other people, especially if you aren't growing as fast as someone else that's in your area of expertise. You may experience imposter syndrome. So it's very important to not scroll to stop doing the research because every single time you see somebody else doing something, it's going to bring you back to that place of overthinking what is right for you and what is right for your journey. Another one of my favorite things to do for overcoming overthinking is to write the decision that you have to make, right? Or the circumstance that you're making a decision about, whatever that thing is, whatever you are think overthinking about, write it down. Then I want you to write down the negative thoughts that you're feeling around that decision or that experience or that circumstance. And then I want you to write down what, what emotions is that is that invoking in you? How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel, I'm guessing those negative thoughts are making you feel really um, maybe sad, frustrated, fearful, doubtful, maybe overwhelmed or frustrated, but whatever those negative thoughts are, write them down, then write down those feelings that they're triggering. And then I want you to think about what behaviors are those thoughts or feelings causing you to choose? Are those behaviors, maybe say you are wanting to eat healthier and we're at the new year. So of course, you know, so many people are talking about new year's resolutions. Um, but so say you want to eat healthier, but you have a decision to make, right? And you're overthinking the food and, and, and everything you're doing. And it ultimately brings you to a point where you feel that, that sense of, of overwhelm and, and you don't even know where to begin. And then, so you choose to eat the candy bar for lunch instead of grabbing a salad on the go or making a salad or grabbing a piece of fruit. So those negative behaviors then will ultimately influence your results. So in this example of weight loss or trying to eat healthy, you just you just blew it, right? By eating the candy bar instead of making that healthy choice. So your result is, is now negative because you had all those negative thoughts roaming around in your brain. So then after you do that exercise, I want you to write down the positive alternatives to those negative thoughts. When you write down those positive thoughts, I want you to make note of how you feel. How does your body react? What are your emotions related to those positive thoughts? Chances are you're going to feel more confident. You're going to maybe feel excited or energized. You may feel hopeful. You may feel um, like you're just ready to move and take action. Those feelings are going to stimulate positive behaviors. Those positive behaviors will produce positive results or positive outcomes. So you can see how on paper then you'll be able to see that the negative leads to negative, the positive leads to positive. So it's important that if you are overthinking something, do this exercise, get all that gobbledygook out of your brain and put it on paper because then your brain is going to be able to see what the consequences are with those thoughts, both from the positive and the negative. And then, you know, another option, if you're overthinking, and I'm going to put in a shameless plug here for the Purpose to Results Academy, because if you are struggling with making decisions in your business or knowing the next right step to take to get the right results that you want, you can learn how to build a solid foundation for long-term success of your brand and business. 
and that is launching next week. So I put a plug in, but what I want to come back to right now, what I think is so important is mindset and overthinking. And I touched on this a little bit. It's one thing to have a clinical diagnosis of anxiety and another to have a negative or pessimistic mindset. However, the two may go hand in hand, but there are choices involved with both. God gave us free will and he gave us the right to choose. So we have a choice to make with every single opportunity that we're faced with. Every single thing you're op- you are overthinking, if you think of it as an opportunity to choose, it's going to change the way you are processing the challenge uh, related to overthinking, right? So you have this gift to be able to choose. But the more you choose positive, the more you're going to rewire the neural pathways in your brain, and you're going to start seeing more positive than negative. And when you start to see more positive, you're going to take more positive action. Obviously, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel more confidence. You're going to have more certainty. You're going to have more clarity. So you're going to alleviate a lot of that overthinking. You can choose to stay in that place of what ifs and those negative anxious thoughts, or you can do the mindset work that is ultimately going to help you change those neural pathways and alleviate overthinking. If you have a negative mindset, you will always overthink. It's just that simple. You will stay overthinking. You'll stay in indecision. You will procrastinate. All of these things that will hold you back from making progress in your life and business. This is true with relationships personally, with relationships in business. This is true with um, achieving goals. It's, it's true with collaborations. It's, it's true with creating new programs. It's true with feeling confidence and clarity around your offers and your pricing. Overthinking will all negative, a negative mindset will always result in overthinking, which will result in procrastination. I don't want that for you guys. Like life is too short. And if God has placed a calling on your heart, it's time for you to take the action to stop overthinking, to to understand what the next right thing to do is in the right order that's going to get the results that you crave. I must be on a food kick today because I talked about the dieting or the the eating healthy and now I talked about craving. So it's it's kind of funny how the brain like associates things. Um, anyway, your brain will always bring negative things to mind. That's just that's just part of science, the biology of our brain, the limbic system of our brain, the amygdala is where it's our fight or flight uh, and that mechanism that we innately have. And, you know, that was in place way back when, before people had had the op- the opportunity or ways to um, know where danger was coming from or when danger was going to be presented. So they were always on guard, right? And that fear was always present. That's still there in our minds today. So we are in our brains. So we really have to work hard to change that, to make it so that we can you know, be more positive because what's going to happen is our, our brain is going to want to tell us that someone else is already doing this business. So there's no opportunity for you that you won't be able to succeed, that you don't know enough, that you don't have a degree or a certification. So you don't have the qualifications to be able to do this and succeed at it, that so-and-so is better than you or so-and-so already has a degree in this, or so-and-so has already established a business in this, that success isn't possible, that money is bad. How many people have a negative money mindset? And it really, truly impacts everything in their business from charging. I had a conversation a couple of days ago with a woman who she, because she's in a service industry, she's a life coach. She doesn't believe she should be charging because she should just be serving. But here's the thing. If you go to an auto mechanic, that auto mechanic is providing a service to you by looking at your car, 
or fixing your car or repairing your car. They don't charge you only for the parts they use. They charge you for their service. The same thing with a washing machine repair person, an appliance repair person. They charge you a service fee and they charge you for the parts. Service is something that can be charged for. Yes, you can have a heart of service and you can be all about volunteering, but you also have the right to charge for the gifts and talents that you're using to help other people, that you're providing value to change or transform their lives or change the trajectory of their lives or their family's lives through these gifts and skills and talents that you're sharing with them, that you're using to serve them with. Think about it like this. If you are in that place of making money by providing a service to other people, you then have more money to give. You have more money to tithe with. You have more money to, for charitable giving. You also have more money to then pay a sitter, if you have young children, to then go out and volunteer. So you see how there, there is always this ripple effect, and it starts with our mindset around everything, every decision that we're trying to make. So the other thing your brain may say is that you aren't good enough or worthy to achieve your goals and dreams. And again, that goes back to past experiences, past traumas, things that other people have said to us over the years, things that we've experienced. But none of those things are true. Because if you have a calling on your heart and God is calling you to serve other people, it's like the Proverbs 31 woman. She served and she was paid for her service. And then she reinvested her money, her earnings into creating other businesses that then helped other people. So if God is calling you to do something, you've got a calling on your heart, but you don't know where to begin. You don't know the right steps to take in the right order. It's time to get the help you need and stop overthinking because overthinking and indecision are a disservice to those people that are waiting for you to show up. They're waiting for you because they have a need that God knows only you can provide for them in the way that they need it provided for them. So this list of negative thoughts that your brain is telling you, these lies, I like to say the enemy, Satan, is actually putting these negative thoughts into our heads and our minds and trying to stop us from following our calling, right? He doesn't want us to do what God wants us to do, so he's trying to hold us back. He's a real pain, but the brain's going to tell you all these things. And therefore, if you want to succeed, you must do the mindset work to stop overthinking. You must get the help that you need. Overthinking is a decision. You can choose to sit in a place of overthinking, or you can choose to take action and allow yourself to grow. If Overthinking has resulted in not knowing where to begin or staying stuck at the current level in your business, not growing. It's time to act. It's time to act for the sake of progress in your life and business. It's time to act so that you can show up for the people who are just waiting for you to serve them. Now, to change your mindset, I'm going to encourage you to do the things that I mentioned before. So, praying, reading scripture, journaling all of the other things that I talked about, but especially the journal, journaling exercise and leaning into scripture for guidance. If you are tired of being an overthinker as you start and grow your business and you're ready for more, you're ready to take the next steps, you're ready to take the right steps in the right order, you're ready to build a solid foundation for your business, the Purposed Results Academy is launching next week. I know I mentioned it before in a shameless plug, but the reality is this program can literally transform your life and your business. Or if you look at it as it'll transform your business and therefore transform your life. But when we talk about building a solid foundation for our business and we talk about doing the mindset work and transforming how we're thinking, we are going to transform our lives. When I tell you the work that I have done on my mindset has been extensive over the years, I'm not exaggerating. It's a daily exercise for me. It's something that I have to do on a daily basis to keep myself moving forward, to keep myself thinking positive. 
our thoughts truly produce our results. And if that's the case, then we have to constantly work on our thoughts, right? To make sure that they are positive, to make sure that we're moving forward. But without doing that work, without doing that thought work, you're not going to have the clarity and confidence to put yourself out there to build your business. But building the foundation first is what is so critically important. And when you do that, you can literally transform. And not only for yourself, but you can transform the people around you too, the lives around you, the people you're serving through your business and your family. If you think about it, you could literally change the trajectory of someone else's life just by showing up in your business and providing the service that God has gifted you to be able to provide. If you join the Purpose to Results method, you will go from overwhelmed, confused, uncertain, and frustrated to having clarity and confidence. And the best part, you won't have to rely on social media to build your brand and business. What I often see with entrepreneurs, so often I see women searching for answers and doing everything they see other people in their space doing. So they see people that they follow on social media and they think, I'm going to do what they're doing because it's working for them. They look like they're making a lot of money. They look like they have a lot of clients. They're always present on social media. So I'm going to do those things. I'm going to do what they're doing so that I can make my business work. But this isn't necessarily right for you because what they're doing may not be aligned with your core values. And if you're not in alignment with your core values, you're going to feel icky, like I mentioned before. Every decision you make that is aligned with your core values will allow you to not only move forward, but will allow you to grow trust. And trust determines buying practices. So the more aligned you are, the more organically you're going to show up the more real and genuine you're going to be so that your audience can feel confident in you. They will trust you and then they will buy from you. But you have to show up authentically. And I know, I know we hear that word authentically a lot, but it really is true when it comes to adhering to your core values and not wavering on them when you're building your business. In addition, you know, doing things with minimal outcomes results in more overthinking. So if you're doing things in the, the wrong order, and I'm going to use this example, if you are, if you are scheduling sales calls, but you don't have your contracts established, you don't have an onboarding process, meaning you don't have a system in place to bring people on for contract signing, for invoicing and all those things, you're doing things in the wrong order. And if you're doing things in the wrong order, the customer is going to be confused. The customer is going to think that you don't have it all together. The customer is not going to trust you that you're going to be able to provide the results they want because you haven't shown them that you have a clear path, that you're organized and that you have processes in place. So it's really important to do things in the right order. When you build a solid foundation first and do the right things in the right order, you can alleviate overthinking, you can get positive results, all while having a meaningful impact and making money. All right, I just wanted to emphasize the whole thing about overthinking today. I threw in the plug for the Purpose to Results Academy because I am so passionate about it and I really think it's going to be a groundbreaking program. There's nothing like it out there. We are going to be talking about so many things, but most importantly today, I want you to do the journaling exercises around whatever those things are that you're overthinking. There will be more to come over the next few days about the Purpose to Results Academy, but you need to be in a good place from a mindset perspective before you can even make a decision about joining an academy, or really taking those next steps, the initiative to grow your business or start your business or launch your business. So I want to encourage you that I'm here for you. I love each and every one of you. And I just want you to have a positive mindset around your gifts, your talents. I want you to do these exercises so that daily you can experience strength in relationships, growth in your business, and, and more confidence and trust in yourself. 
All right, that is it for this live training today. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments as this is live today uh, on Facebook, in the Facebook group, the Purpose to Results Academy, or you can um, send me an email always at info at the Robin .com, or this will also be published on the podcast and on YouTube. So there will be show notes and there are links to other blog posts, other podcast episodes that I've done that I will put in the comments for the Facebook group, but I will also um, link in the show notes so that anyone who is listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, you can actually go to the show notes and access those additional links. I'm going to also put a link for the, in the show notes, I will put a link for the um, new ebook that I created, 10, 10 strategies. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. 10 strategies on how you can start and grow your business without relying on social media. Because like I said before in the training, Social media can be such a distraction and it can really pull you into the realm of comparison and doing things that are not aligned with your business, that aren't aligned with your values, just causing you to overthink more and more and more. So if you are interested in building your business without having to rely on social media and want to learn other strategies, that ebook is a great resource for you. So I will put the link to that in the show notes as well. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye for this afternoon and I will talk to you all soon.